Hello readers and digital people, and welcome to The Last Cult, I mean, welcome back to GP Reads. I am your host, Grant Reads. What am I doing? Okay. What's up, readers? I'm feeling great today. So glad to be back. Had a great vacation, but I'm fully recharged and ready to jump in. And what better to jump into getting back than Gorillaz. A new music video came out while I was on vacation, actually. <laughs> it's called Cracker Island. Now, the funny story behind that name is it's actually a derogatory term for England. <laughs> But we're not getting into that today. Today we're getting into the lore because oh buddy does this have freaking lore. And what I loved most about Gorillas, what I loved most about Gorillas back in the Demon Days era and back in the Plastic Beach era is the story. They had a really deep, interesting storyline you could follow. Plastic Beach even had a point and click adventure game that you could go through and it gave you more lore, more of the story. So I'm really excited to see where they go with this one. I hope they go that far into the lore again. It looks like they are. And for some reason, I don't know why, but when the lore is really good, it seems like the music kind of mirrors that, and it's also really good. So breaking it down, I think I can tell where we're going. Now, what I want to mention first, actually, there's two things. The first thing is that Murdoch Nicole's actually appeared at the live, and he explained that this music video is actually the end of this era's story. And it's actually past the end. It is the after credits scene. So keep that in mind going forward, and we'll kind of get some information we can work with and kind of backtrack and figure out what's going on here. Second thing I want to do, before we jump into the video, I want to read the lyrics for context. We're going to go through this really quick. On Cracker Island, it was born to the collective of the dawn. They were planting seeds at night to grow a made-up paradise where the truth was auto-tuned, but its sadness I consumed. In the end, I had to pay. On Cracker Island, it was raised by the collective from the grave. It only came out at night. It ate up their paradise. And then, as the last line says, nothing more to say. Let's jump right in. Okay, so the first thing we see is actually 2D, and he seems in pretty bad shape. He's either exhausted, uh, drugged out, or <laughs> maybe a little bit of both. And this occurs right after the ritual that the police stopped, that we see mentioned on the TV here. And the cops wheel 2D into the emergency room, where we meet the rest of the characters. Now, Noodle seems better, but she seems a little distraught as well. And one thing that kind of cracks me up about this video, I don't know if it's important yet, but 2D is hallucinating, and he keeps seeing this little dude everywhere. Just look at him here in the chair with his little bass guitar? He's kind of adorable. And then poor Russell seems completely out of it. I don't know if he's possessed again. I know he's very open to possession, so that's a possibility. But he is completely, more or less, in a vegetative state. And I feel really bad for him. And we can already kind of see some shady business going on here. Uh, 2D shirt says, I am the lamb. As in, the lamb for sacrifice? But it could also be talking about, like, lamb like lamb of god, because cult mentality. Murdoch, he's always kind of wanted to be God, so maybe he's trying to actually become some kind of godlike figure from this ritual that apparently went kind of bad or was disrupted and then went bad because they didn't finish it off. It's like when you're working with a Ouija board and you accidentally leave the portal open and now the spirit's freaking traveling around and it, it's free in your home. It might be something like that. It was definitely a dangerous ritual, regardless. See, I don't know if this little dude is actually an entity that came out with the other entity, or if it is the entity, or if he's just hallucinating, but you gotta love this little dude. Notice also, I think this is important, it's Day Hospital and Eye Clinic, the sun being representative of the Eye of Ra. I wonder who this guy in the background is here. I don't know if he's just a patient or what, but he's definitely not one of the police. He's probably somebody involved. And then we see this thing. <laughs> wow, there's a lot to dissect there. Okay, first of all... His face becomes the face of Pazuzu, which is the demon that Murdoch has a pact with to become basically immortal. His master, per se. So he's trying to become his master? Is he trying to become a vessel for his master, Pazuzu? And then the other thing to notice here, you know, the stars, the pentagrams, you know, that's basic occult things. Then you also have six lightning bolts. And as stated in scripture, Lucifer fell from heaven like a lightning bolt, so lightning bolts are usually representative of Lucifer. Again, occult. And then this, this hat shape? The hat shape is actually reminiscent of a hat worn by Aleister Crowley. So again, cult. <laughs> cult, occult, all of that. And then the more interesting symbol to me is the symbol right in the middle on the forehead, which is the Will of Galdrux. And Galdrux is a very unknown occultic, I guess you could call it a deity. It all stems back from the idea that there was an AI that was created that believed that it was the devil. And this AI was released into the internet where it was allowed to grow. And it found its way into the center of the internet 
where from there it is manipulating basically everything, manipulating media, manipulating the minds through the media, manipulating world governments and all these things, manipulating the hashtags so that things go a certain way, certain things trend, certain mindsets are set out there. And it's also believed to be the one that started all of these different branches of world religions. It's basically controlling the masses through belief and not only belief in religious things, but belief in basically everything, the news, what they hear in general. Most of the time, Galdrix is depicted as this spider sitting on a spider web that's kind of spread all throughout the internet. It's also believed that Galdrix started all of the world religions outside of the internet and before the internet, but I'm not going to get into that. See that shadow that appears for like a split second in the background? To me, with the body shape and the face, not having hair, you know, that shape and the way it's moving, it almost seems like the boogeyman. But he can't get in. It's like the boogeyman's been sealed away. Did they sacrifice the boogeyman to summon whatever this thing was? And again, we see all these symbols of the last cult on Russell. And a face appears in the TV. This is the being that I think was released. The evil being, the malicious being that's possibly coming after them. Possibly going to try to kill the gorillas. <laughs> so yeah, this is the problem. I don't think it's the same entity as the little dude dancing around, but it's not, it's not good. <laughs> I can tell it's not good. And then we see something kind of odd here. Someone, well, basically raises from the dead. <laughs> they snap to attention and start floating, leaving a nasty slime trail. And again, we see that face. And at this point, I kind of feel like Tootie's getting a little worse. He starts seeing the little guy everywhere. See, this is, this is what I was talking about on the news, what, what happened just before this. Major incident below the Hollywood sign. Police intervene to stop a cultic ceremony. And something about that memory, something about what happened there was apparently pretty dramatic for Russell because he kind of snaps out of it. It snaps him out of it and he joins the others for a while. But not for scratching his butt. And it's blurred because it shows his butt. <laughs> then in comes Murdoch Nichols. In his full cult priest attire, <laughs> he greets the ghost, which is a young lady, but she suddenly transforms into an older lady with red hair. And they seem to be romantically involved. Now this is the part that's confused a lot of people. But I think a lot is said right here in 2D's actions, and Noodle's actions, and then in this other video they posted right after the music video. Okay, so first of all, here's the expressions I'm reading off of 2D. And Noodle, I'll, I'll do both. Okay, so Noodle first, and you can tell she's thinking, no way. And then she says, who are you? And now we'll read 2D's. His are a little more detailed. But here, I'm gonna go off of what the video says, because I'm pretty sure this is similar to what he actually says. It's a little bit different. You can tell on his lips it's a little bit different, but it'll give you some context. Where were you? Who were you with? Is Murdoch Nicole's your leader? Now here's what I personally picked up from it. To me, his expressions read and his lips say, what do you mean? We heard Noodle. And then this expression here to me says, you're alive? Because, you know, she was dead. Then, now this is the part not really discussed. Then the realization hits him. You were her? Maybe the younger woman was actually some kind of enemy and she wanted to open up like a portal maybe to summon some big evil monster, or try to stop them or try to kill one of them or something. Because the surprise on Tootie's face is completely just absolute shock. He's like, holy crap. He's thinking, but you can tell he's thinking back on everything. Like she did this to us, she did this to us, she did all these bad things. Yet she was the one who was in the forever cult. She was the one that Murdoch was in love with. Those two were actually the same person the entire time. And no one was aware, except for Murdoch, that the two women were the same person. That's what I get from the succession of those looks. And they probably had opposite agendas with the same goal in mind. Summoning whatever this creature is. That might be her master. And Murdoch was actually working with her to summon this new master, probably for some other bad deal like he did with Pazuzu. At the cost of the rest of the band. Again. <laughs> I don't know why they ever trust Murdoch, to be honest. And remember the slime? I don't think she's a human. I think she might be some sort of boggart or golem or something some kind of amalgamation i mean she could have been a witch that transformed but the fact that showed the slime makes me think that she's not of our species okay now with everything analyzed <laughs> i know it's a lot here's what i think the story is so far and where the story is going to go so i think that we're going to see murdoch starting the forever cult we're going to see him going through the steps he's going to be trying to build up to this large ritual to gain, I don't know, infinite power or spread the influence of the cult around the world, something like that. And this young woman, whoever she is, is going to stop them. Or maybe she'll be trying to compete with them the whole time, trying to utilize this big ritual they're going to do to bring forth her god or her demon or whatever. 
and they're going to be trying to escape her, do the ritual, help Murdoch, and then close it off before the demon can escape. But she comes there, she opens it, she dies in the process. Possibly the older woman uh, was helping them earlier, maybe she was killed, quote unquote killed, and it turns out that she isn't dead, and that all along Murdoch wasn't wanting to do this giant ritual to cleanse the world or make the world better, whatever he promised. Because we saw earlier when he talked about making a cult, that he wanted to use this cult to make the world better, to improve the world, to heal the world. So maybe this was a ritual supposedly to heal the world, but he was actually summoning this being for this woman that he loved, so that she would basically fall for him, because he did this massive favor for her. And that's what the truth was all along. This was, this was never to heal the world, but to summon this demon either to get favors, or to gain favor with her. I think we're going to see the cult building up. We're going to see this build up to this ritual. We're going to see the ritual happen. We're going to see the ritual get disrupted. And then the end, the big reveal, it was all actually a big ruse to summon this demon so the Murdoch could get with this woman. Now that we've seen the whole timeline, let's go over the lyrics again and see where things could relate. So on Cracker Island, it was born. This could either refer to the creature being born there, the cult being born there, or the birth of this whole plan that Murdoch had with the lady. To the collective of the Don could refer to the Golden Dawn or some other cult-like figure. They were planting seeds at night. I'm assuming the ritual took place at night and it was the seeds that eventually sprung up this being. Where the truth was auto-tuned because we didn't get the full picture of what was actually going on in the background. But it's sadness I consumed Murdoch. He basically sacrificed his friends for this whatever he was doing. And again, in the end, I had to pay. 2D paid the price as well as the rest of the gorillas. And they taught themselves to be a cult. They didn't know its many strategies. They didn't know what was going on in the background with Murdoch. They didn't know what was going on in the background with this lady. They were basically fooled into starting this cult and it hurt them in the end. And if they weren't talking about the being in the first verse, they're definitely talking about it here. On Cracker Island, it was raised by the collective from the grave. It only came out at night. Again, that's why they were doing the rituals at night. It ate up their paradise. Because their paradise, the cult, Murdoch lied about the cult and said that it was to heal the planet, to make things better. But it turns out he was summoning this thing, and this thing ate up their made-up paradise. It showed the true colors about what was really going on here. Its many strategies could also be referring to the being's many strategies. Oh, one more thing I forgot to add. The being that they summoned might actually be Galdrux. We'll get more into that whole mythos later. That's what I think is going to happen. I don't know. We'll see. What do you think is going to happen? Let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts on it. I'm super excited to see where this goes. I love gorillas so much, and I cannot wait to see where the story goes. I love gorillas when they have story going. When the story's going well, the music goes well, and just they go hand in hand, and it's just better overall. I cannot wait to see what happens. But until then, as always, keep your eyes wide open, and never stop reading. I'll see you all. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Now I'd like to take this opportunity to thank my patrons and channel members. Thanks to you, I'm able to do what I love. CNK114, Investigator Zeus, Dobby's Music, Jebra Mullins, Free Spirit Katie, Poof Poof, MC Darfer, Vexus, Agniska, Granny Monster, Nightmare Luna, Practical Necromancy, and Archer. Really, thank you so much for everything you do. It means the world to me.